Good afternoon. Pleasure seeing you. So we have such a wonderful crowd to attend our session, learn, grow, and succeed in Kubernetes contributions. I'll start with uh, a round of uh, introduction. I feel that uh, KubeCon is like a, a big uh, gathering event of uh, netizens, you know. We sit in front of the computer all day, and after meeting up, we don't know who is who. So I'll start with myself. My name is Zhang Wenjia. I work in Google as a software engineer. I contribute to Kubernetes uh, SD, SDE and GKE. Sorry for the you know uh, slip of tongue. My name is Li Xiang. I contributed to several projects. SCT is the first one, and later on, I participated in final permissions, Kubernetes, and Rocket, and some others. I participated and involved in some of them. Let me add, uh, Li Sheng is a modest guy. He's the founder of SCT, so a lot of contributions indeed. My name is Xu Chao. I get up ID is called uh, Caesar Xu Chao. I only involved in Kubernetes. Most of them are uh, APN involved related uh, projects. My name is Ren Yu Chen. I only contribute to the open set, open source of Kubernetes project uh, for storage related uh, programs. <coughs> so every time to attend uh, KubeCon, uh, I'm uh, exhilarated. I used to stay in an enclosed space to do the things, uh, to do the daily uh, uh, mundane concerns. But in KubeCon, we saw so many people gather from different corners of the world and offer uh, your insight to discuss the same product, uh, the development and the application. I think uh, for Kubernetes as an open source product, it's just, uh, because of its unique uh, uh, glamour that have attracted so much a wonderful crowd. So every time I learn a lot from uh, KubeCon, and this time, it is actually the third time. And the first time was uh, in, also in Shanghai uh, last year. Uh, it was the first KubeCon in China. And then the second time was uh, held in North America. And the third time is in Shanghai again. I'm very happy. How many of you attended the Shanghai's uh, KubeCon the year before the last uh, last year? So I don't know if you uh, noticed that the organizing committee has selected the timing quite well. So last year, the KubeCon was uh, when uh, the, the, the crab was, uh, you know, um, popularizing themselves. So a lot of crabs. But this is not the most exciting uh, thing for me. So every half a year or every uh, several months, I attend the KubeCon, and I'll find that for Q the Kubernetes growth, you can see it for yourself. The growth of the community, uh, the growth of each uh, community members. So for some of them, they just barely knew uh, the concept of the Kubernetes. And like my boss told me to attend the KubeCon because my company is about to use it. And indeed, we find that it's very uh, good. And we uh, grow from a, a participant to a contributor to a member. So this uh, this growth are amazing. So today I'm feel very excited to have invited so many renowned um, players uh, in this field to share in Kubernetes their story. Just now mentioned that Kubernetes as open source product simplifies its uniqueness. I'd like to uh, throw a question to you to our audience. For you, in your uh, software web uh, career, except uh, besides the uh, Kubernetes, can you talk about some of uh, the products you developed? Or compared with these products, uh, what is the unique features of uh, Kubernetes? Who is about to make the start? I'll make the start. Initially, I do ABCD project and our QS. Uh, we have we are from the same startup team, so we did some um, open system. It's also open source project. So Kubernetes compared with this open source products, 
it's a platform uh, product. It's a platform project. So it integrates, uh, synchronizes many cloud resources. Uh, this is uh, very interesting because it's a platform. There will be many participants involved and contributing to the project, making it a community-driven project. Initially, people look at uh, Kubernetes as a QS uh, and Google involved. And because of so many cloud provider and Microsoft uh, engaged in it and other uh, big players. So this is a very interesting project. Uh, it's growing bigger and bigger. It's also a platform based. So it uh, offers a lot of uh, uh, upstream uh, capabilities. It's a, it's a platform for platform builders. It's also incubating some other platforms, like uh, the Service Mesh. Mesh, It's a platform. And we can see in building a kinetic uh, project. This is also a very interesting. In Kub Kubernetes ecosystem is further expanding uh, more uh, uh, derivative pl pl platform. So this is uh, one of the Kubernetes' biggest uh, uh, in glamour. It attracted so many researchers to further uh, the, the the platform. Thank you. I have uh, little experience in, in other open source projects. I can only compare some of uh, Google's uh, in-house uh, uh, products. For, for me, Kubernetes open source, and it, it involves uh, many different uh, participants and contributors, so it attracts uh, wider attention, and it requires uh, very good communication skills to talk to different uh, developers. And at the end of the day, the end product is is good compared with the Google's uh, um, in-house in uh, products uh, using Kubernetes. For one, there will be more uh, languages uh, and communication uh, processes, and it's easier for the uh, for development. The environment people are discussing online, while in Google, you must find the right experts to obtain good comments. That's it. Thank you. I used to do um, database-related uh, projects, like some writers, uh, I read some writers. I think uh, Kubernetes compared with uh, other projects. Primarily, the architecture is uh, flexible, is agile. So in terms of the uh, uh, scalability, it's easier. So it's a platform-based project. Uh, it's easier to build anything uh, you want on the platform. So as a open source project, compared with uh, what you develop in-house, the requirement, the user expectations are different. And your teammates, you have different teammates uh, jointly developing the, the platform. So there are pros and cons, of course. And I mentioned that the Kubernetes itself has some uniqueness, unique features. And Feng Chao mentioned some. For you, as developers, in developing the software, what is the easiest and most challenging thing when developing Kubernetes? Uh, we will start from uh, uh, the, the other way around. So I think for Kubernetes ecosystem is relatively mature, just like Xiao uh, has mentioned. There are a lot of uh, contributors, lots of documentation, so it's easier, e easier to search uh, materials, uh, literature, and people. And the most challenging thing is because it's uh, sca sca scalability, it's good scalability. So some of our uh, some of the way are uh, ego, so you have to address uh, these uh, uh, issues. For me, it's a, it's a big challenge. In developing the project, we met uh, many issues related to performances. I think the most challenging thing, some has mentioned that Kubernetes has a good scalability. I'm, I was in charge of uh, API. So it provides uh, scalability. So speaking of uh, scalability, we must consider how to maintain its uh, future um, upgradable. So design-wise, people it's difficult for people to reach consensus. And um, where the simplest uh, component, I, I cannot think of uh, 
Now, I think the easiest thing for Kubernetes project, like you don't need to write PPT, you don't need to report uh, the requirements, the spe specs are there. You only need to take references and find out how many uh, are needed. So it's a simple procedure. And the most challenging thing is that the project itself uh, use many aspects. You don't know that uh, how the users are using uh, the system. Maybe you want to improve uh, on some aspects that you deem as worthy as useful, but uh, you must, from a you know user perspective. And another point, uh, just like Chi Chang mentioned, uh, the Kubernetes is based on the APS uh, server. Um, so if you want to change, modify uh, this bit, it will be very challenging. If we make uh, the already very highly scalable uh, platform more scalable, scalable, it will be a, a challenge, indeed. Before the talk has started, I ask several questions to understand uh, people's whether people have uh, started, uh, you know, some some thinking. I, I find that uh, most of uh, them are, are, are beginners. Um, most of them have never written uh, code in Kubernetes. So for beginners, in fact, the easy spots uh, they are more much more than uh, uh, challenging uh, spots. If they can all learn uh, how to write uh, open source code, uh, there's no reason that you cannot uh, uh, excel. They encounter issues that uh, you will also encounter, and you can also you can search uh, search these problems online and find your answer, like a code convention. You only need to check that the open source language. And another thing, another good point, don't. Don't panic if you make mistakes, because no one knows uh, what the user cases of others look like. Even if you uh, make mistakes, you, no one would, uh, is concerned, uh, will, will be mad at you that why have you not uh, considered it in the design uh, phase. So for learners, for fresh beginners, it's a good way uh, to contribute to a product like this, and will grow and your growth uh, pathway, it, you, you will learn much quickly how to use uh, uh, Kubernetes compared with uh, other products. And also, there's a lot of uh, uh, if there's a lot of testing involved and many people reporting bugs to you. Next, we are going to get into details. When you come to Kubernetes, what kind of contribution you can make? and what kind of roles you can play in Kubernetes. I found most of you have used the Kubernetes since you have paid for the tickets. At least you've used it. If you are a user of Kubernetes, you are already a contributor to it. If you have any questions about it when you're using it, for example, what kind of things it failed, failed to satisfy your need, then maybe you need to figure out it yourself and you can promote an issue. You can set up an issue and ask questions there. In this way, you are helping Kubernetes to become better. Next, we can have a look at the community page here. Apart from being a user to set to set up any issues, what else you can do in this community? On well, the first level is the members of Kubernetes. Before being the members, you've already a contributor before you becoming a member. However, it has some requirement to be a member of Kubernetes. It's not a big requirement. It's not that difficult. You, there were two reviewers of the sponsors. To their roles in the Kubernetes are reviewers. And you have made some contribution to the project, has submitted some of the PR. Of course, there are some people who review the PR for you. And the reviewer during this process will have their own opinions on you that whether you have achieved the membership requirements and whether you have achieved the membership level. Next band is the reviewer, approver, sub project owner. And in the document link, they also have some detailed introduction, very detailed description about each of the roles. 
and also the steps to become different roles. I also want to ask you, as our guest, which role did you start? And during your journey, what kind of change you have experienced? I think when I contribute to Kubernetes, it seems you haven't set up those role bands starting from 2014 because the project of Kubernetes and just announced, and I'm interested in it. And also, some I'm also one of the people interested in it because I'm writing another thing called uh, ETCD. And I'm looking at it just to find some useful tools and also make some contribution. And our company work on another project called Fleet, maybe similar to uh, to use it as in the systemd and sysbone to start a con uh, container, but do not has a good orchestration capability like Kubernetes, and it's like. Kubernetes has a better abstraction on some concepts and services. So not just myself to clarify this to devote it to the Kubernetes and start to give up the original flicks. And eventually Kubernetes has become a uh, Kubernetes focus coming. So we started to contribute more project to it like over overall network. And also have designed another product that is originally port for the Kubernetes. Originally when we build the Kubernetes team, we have done a lot of work, mainly focusing on security, because a lot of uh, enterprise user and has authorization mod model is it's just on the early stage. So we have promoted a lot of progress on security. And as for the extension, we also done a lot of work. For, at that time, it's called the Spass Resource. It's, it was still called the uh, uh, this name. And we also have been <laughs> so that we can make this uh, ecosystem more thriving and prosperous. Because we're always thinking, how can we make more contribution to this community so that the community will be more active and more projects are able to run on Kubernetes and the barrier will be lower, lower for many people so that it can satisfy more needs of the user scenarios. And we started to use Kubernetes in 2015. It's a Kubernetes 1.0. And my first job is in, was in Google at that time. In the first few months, we are modifying different documents, but do not do a lot of do not do a lot of contribution. But gradually, the first contribution is to uh, write some codes on it to uh, recover some bugs. After recovering some bugs, then I work on some small projects and and then in, on APM to work on some more difficult things. And now we feel that when people making contributions would be different from um, a few years ago, like the uh, Kubernetes 6 organization also have a lot of projects. And we are also working on the storage migration. And the contribution is not on Kubernetes. And we also welcome all of you to work on this project. I think I'm a little bit later than them. At the time, because our company want to migrate our own application to Kubernetes, started from modifying some incidences and the debugging. And then I started to be familiar with the coding. And also, I'm interested in storage. So under some of the guidance, for example, um, some of the key contributor there, 
I started to design some features and contribute my own code. Thank you very much. We can see no matter and all of them started from a small point. For example, the testing documents or anywhere you're interested in or you have seen the PR and review it and then you found that maybe you can improve it and specify some of those lines that you are not satisfied with and why you write it in a different way, etc. To start is not that difficult. Everybody can start easily. And you can make your own contribution with your own capability since then. We can talk about something more specific. How can we learn growth and succeed with the Kubernetes code? And what kind of information that could be useful to us? And what kind of things can help us? Many people may not know that. And also, it's uh, very touching that a lot of people, apart from writing codes or making contribution to Kubernetes, they also have done a lot of work to the community. For example, there are some in some of the events that can help everyone I, in different kinds of documents that can help us. They're trying all methods to help each other. And this is not loaded. I want to show you. The information of the community. You can zoom in a bit. And on the repository of the Kubernetes communities, there are different kinds of useful information. And all of them started from that. Of course, when they started their contribution, you haven't found this. Even two years ago, we did not see that much in the reservoir. Um, for example, communication. It can tell you what different fields that you can contribute in, for example, YouTube video, and also the six special interest group. When KBS become bigger, there will be different aspects. So now it has developed into different six. If you are interested in it, you can join the special interest group and each of the six group will have the community meetup meeting and different kind of um, conferences you can join them and some social media as well like twitter and stack overflow and also in china maybe you will find some local events here as well or local website and slack channel slack channel you can communicate with the members of the communities on sex and there are different type of issues all the questions and all of the issues that you set up will be managed for example when we um, launch an issue there is a bug scrap meeting every week there were two meetings that is focusing on special interest groups for all the new added issues and PRs. So you, this, all of these issues set up will be managed and reviewed. And now it has been public and everyone can join it. If you're interested in any of these PRs or issues, you can join it and review it. Next is how you review this document in office hours and meetings as well every month. There are a lot of meetings. If you do not know where to get this information, only you will only find those um, schedules that are too tight for you to follow. Just like I mentioned, there are different kinds of special interest groups. You can follow or join anything you're interested in. Yeah. 
Because now we we are in China, I also want to ask another question. That in China or Asia communities, what's the characteristics and challenges here? I know Xiaoge and Yuquan. You are now spend a lot of time in China. And compare with the Northern America, China will have its own features first. It's the time, the time difference, different time zones. So the meetings of this six group would be mixed by them. Maybe they need to add some extra time for it. If you have any opinions, maybe you can communicate with us. I think the challenge is a lot. First is the time zone difference. Next is the language difference. When you're writing, because we have quite high requirements, when you describe it, and people want it to be concrete and specific, clear, so it will have some requirements on that. And thirdly, the domestic colleagues in these communities would be a little bit shy. So, and for the foreign colleagues, they would like to propose some of the simple or very easy books or issues, but for the domestic colleagues, they haven't um, show this situation and also in the foreign community they will have more frequent communication and even the daily meetup but in China I think the frequency is lower and the sharing channels are limited some of the like the Huawei Alibaba may be able to host some of the monthly meetup. Maybe you can join it and tell them your opinions and also allocate some of the things you want to do in Kubernetes. Because we hope it to be a community driven driven project. If we are not able to reflect these voices in the community, then it's very difficult for us to promote development of the community. So we should have more meetups in China. I think uh, for me, there are two challenges. So like Wen Jia has mentioned, the first challenge is about the, 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 the meetups. Uh, they are uh, following the US time zone. So for their morning, we are, you know, at uh, 1 or even uh, 12 uh, a.m. So it's uh, difficult for us to attend the, the uh, meetups. And second, actually, Maybe some some uh, due to some reasons, some of uh, the um, overseas uh, stuff because of uh, the internet or maybe some other reasons we cannot get our hands on them. So for some uh, KPI uh, relied related materials we must acquire through some special means. So for for me. Maybe U.S. Uh, or maybe there's some other ways to address it, so we can get our hands on these uh, materials uh, easier, more easily. An advertisement that Alibaba is trying to uh, transfer the, these materials uh, to China, so some of the Docker image. And we are also uh, used doing localization for the Hum Hub, because within the Hub, there are many, many images and trust in Google Store, sorry, we are trying to, to do the localization. So if you have any other special needs, feel free to talk to our team. We are more than willing to help uh, the domestic community. How about Chow? Uh, we are based in the States. So what's your take on this? By attending uh, KubeCon or in your daily lives, in your communication with domestic developers, what's your take on, on, on this situation? I think uh, in China, as a contributor, it is a um, very practical thing. I saw, actually, I collaborated with a lot of uh, domestic uh, contributors. So it's a step by step. You want you join the community first. You should uh, win the trust, and that is by doing more stuff, starting from a simple box fixing. And gradually, step by step, people will trust you. 
So I didn't see any uh, biases against the Chinese uh, uh, contributors, and I don't think uh, language is a is, is a problem. Personally, I think uh, for U.S. people, although they 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 perceive your English uh, pronunciation as somewhat uh, problematic, but still, they still get you. I think last year is the first uh, Chinese uh, CubeCom, and this year is the second Com. So during the one year's time, you can see. And also on the Kubernetes report, that the, the contributors' uh, PR from from coming from China is getting greater and rapidly. So how many companies in China and uh, how many developers in China there are? This trend is there. One thing I have uh, realized when preparing the slides: Kubernetes community. Uh, on the on on their uh, web page, there are many language uh, options: Germany, Fran French, English. But there's no Chinese. So from this simple thing, um, we, we can start with you know providing simple translation. So there's a lot of things to contribute. So this topic, for one, it's about uh, uh, experience. The audiences will tell us that as beginners, some of the things to uh, be mindful about. And second, as Chinese uh, developers and uh, users, if you have uh, any thoughts, don't don't take. Uh, Please uh, don't refrain from mentioning it because it's a, a trifle for you. But uh, whatever the subject matter, feel free to to shoot so that um, it can attract attention and be addressed. Actually, we have a special interest group called a uh, contributor experience, with the hope to enhance people's experience. We have one minute left, so I like to ask uh, if you have any you know questions. <coughs> Thank you for sharing with us. I'm interested in, you know, for you in open source, um, how many time will you invest uh, weekly? For developers, they have, uh, you know, their uh, their work and uh, open source project. This project is only part their part time occupation. So actually, this is a question, you know, for for many of the uh, for many of the audiences. They share this question. The previous uh, company, I actually I I work as a full time open source uh, developer, uh, engaged in a lot of uh, projects. Now I switched to another company. And most of the, my time was spent on internal platform development, and of course I will spend some time on open source. So now now I don't have that much spare time, but still there are some. Uh, you know, some spare time each day. Uh, it's not saturated. As long as you're interested, you always find some time to do it. I think I'm I'm a lucky guy. My company paid me to do open source, <coughs> so I don't need the uh, additional investment. But for some period of time, there were some. I I was uh, working on some uh, in-house uh, open source projects, so I will not be you know uh, investing too much time on. on uh, an other open source project, so there are some some uh, time limit indeed. Previously, I was a full time uh, open source uh, developer, and in Alibaba, I have a lot of time uh, to do open source related uh, stuff. Not necessarily writing code, but some some you know other generic uh, stuff. So I have some some. Uh, some time for that stuff. So my feeling is that uh, people can't find uh, some time to do open source, and there will be a significant self improvement by participating in open source project than engaging in corporate affairs, because it's a uh, you know joint efforts made by many. I don't think we have uh, time for another question. So how about this? Um, after that. Offline, feel free to approach us and ask questions. Um, I should have uh, prepared a contact information for us. Now I'll, I'll write it down. Thank you.